off the coast of a small Latin American country, minding what I thought was my own business. It was purely a pleasure dive, and I was having fun poking through an interesting wreck. It was one that I hadn't seen before. be the last wreck that I would ever see. situation under control, but when I got to the surface with my attacker, I found that my troubles were only beginning. Come aboard! Come on! later I was in a cell in the capital city. All of my explanations, all my protests didn't do me a bit of good because a revolution had broken out and I was suspected of being in the service of the newly ousted dictator. Senor Nelson? Yeah? Permit me to introduce myself. I am Ramon Montoya, minister of the new government. My colleague here you have already met, Carlos Prado. Yeah, I bet. Senor, we have come here to apologize to you for the inconvenience you have suffered. Well, that's okay if I can go now. You have been a victim of mistaken identity. I hope you will understand that when a dictator is overthrown, things are not very normal. I understand that. Uh, Senor, we would be most happy if you would wait for a few minutes. We would like to have a little talk with you. You mean you want to talk to me here? It is the quietest place in the city at the moment. Okay. What are we talking about? About you, Senor Nelson. And about liberty and freedom and democracy. Ideas that have been won most dearly here in the past few days. Now that we have verified your identity, we wish you to help us in our struggle. Oh, why me? Because of your reputation, both personally and professionally. Senor Nelson, we need your help in a project of great secrecy, but of vital importance to our success. 
such a big secret, I cannot even tell you now. Uh, if I don't know what it's all about, how can you expect an answer from me? I don't. Uh, not yet. I merely want to suggest that if you are sympathetic with our cause and are willing to listen to more, you permit us to make a show of force with you for the benefit of the enemy, to take him off the track. Like what? Like going through the motion of closing that door behind you again, of publicly uh, deporting you from our country as an enemy of our government to, say, a place like Nassau, where you will make a rendezvous with one of our agents and there await the development of our plan. Well, that sounds like real cloak and dagger stuff. Call it that if you wish, but uh, it will be explained to you at the right time. Then you can make your decision, yes or no. Hmm. And uh, what if I say no now? What happens to me? The cell door is unlocked. You can walk directly out. Uh, you've aroused my curiosity. Lock the door again. Thank you, Senor Nelson. Thank you. We will justify your belief. Uh, I'm sure you will. Thank you, Senor. It was only a few days later, after being publicly deported, I sailed to Nassau. The next step in the weird plan was to check into the Nassau Beach Lodge. I was supposed to wait there until I got a message with the code word swordfish in it. Till that came, I was on my own. It started out as a pleasant interlude. I sunned myself and made friends with some of the other guests at the hotel. No one could have taken me for anything but a tourist. But after a few days, I found myself impatient. I hadn't had any word from my mysterious contact, let alone the one word that I was waiting for. Then I got a telephone call. Hello. Mr. Nelson? Yeah, this is Mike Nelson. I have the report for you on the fishing conditions. Go ahead. The swordfish are leaping in the harbor. Good. I headed for historic old Fort Montague, where I could get a good look at the harbor. in the harbor was flying a pennant and on the pennant was a swordfish I realized who my contact was when I spotted a familiar face it was Prado who had arrested me the week before and now he was out of uniform I was more intrigued than ever I knew that I was wanted aboard. I approached the boat from underwater. It reduced to a minimum the chances of being observed. In the boat's cabin, I learned what it was all about. All this secrecy may seem foolish to you, but now I can explain and you can judge. I'm listening. As you must know, the dictator fled when we moved in on the city. But he took the precaution two days before to load most of the money in the national treasury on a vessel which sailed for Florida. Smart guy. He was no fool. But you have not heard it all. Knowing that under international law, the United States government would impound the vessel and return the money to the legal government of our country, he scuttled the vessel not far off our coast. Money and all. Well, what good would the money do him on the bottom of the ocean? For the moment, none. But once it becomes known to the world that our treasury is bankrupt, then our stability is threatened and the road is wide open for the tyrant to march back into power. Uh, then he salvages the money and the uh, show starts all over again, huh? Correct. Well, why don't you salvage the money? Well, that is... Ah, uh, yeah, I see. That's where I come in, huh? That is where you come in. Well, you got your own divers. I met one of them. We have divers. Good ones. 
But we also, I regret to say, have spies, traitors, and subversives in our ranks. Men who for personal gain would welcome back a dictator. That is why we come to you. I see. You will do it, Senor Nelson? The pay will be good. But the cause will be better. Senor Prado, you got yourself another diver. Thank you, senor. Prado and I left the Bahamas far behind and moved toward our objective by a very casual, indirect route. And then we wandered into Rafael Bay, where the ship had been scuttled. The bay and the shoreline appeared to be completely deserted. Carlos, let me see that chart. I worked over charts of the bay, concentrating mainly on the depth levels. In that way, I estimated the logical place at which a ship would be scuttled without being too deep to be easily reached. On my first dive, I hit it practically on the nose. There was a ship down there, all right. I went in to investigate. I'd have to proceed with my guard up every second. There was no way of telling what might be waiting inside. like the missing gold reserves, the lifeblood of the country's economy. Quietly to bring up the money. Not such a quiet job after all. No. Oh. You stay here. I'll take a look. Yeah. Give up the salvage? You wouldn't like that, huh? No. We're a pair of sitting ducks right now. We gotta move out of this spot. And not come back? 
I'll come back. But underwater. At the end of about two hours, we decided that it was safe to get back aboard our boat. And we were right. The riflemen on the shore had given up, convinced that they had either killed us or scared us off. Not to disillusion them on the latter point, we wasted no time getting out of there. We anchored some distance away out of range of fire from the shore, and I prepared to swim back to the scuttle ship. Are you cruise slowly by in about 45 minutes, huh? Looks like they're gonna shoot at you. Keep moving. It didn't take me long to reach the ship again. I headed straight for the treasure cabin. But something struck me as peculiar. It seemed to me that I had left the cabin door open. And now it was closed. I looked it over carefully. There was a wire, barely visible. And just below it, a booby-trapped grenade. A bomb that could have destroyed me in another moment. Now I realize the shooting up above was not an isolated incident. Someone was playing for keeps. Thanks to my Navy frogman experience, booby traps were no puzzle to me. I found a splinter of steel and deactivated the grenade with it. Inside, but nothing had been touched in the cabin. I rigged the tripwire so that no one else would know the bomb was disarmed. I got out of there, fast. Whoever set that booby trap couldn't be very far away. I decided to wait for him. I found what seemed like a very good vantage point, well hidden in rocks and giving me an excellent view of anyone who might approach the ship from any direction. Unfortunately, the men for whom I was watching had seen me first. While I was keeping my eyes on the ship, they were already closing in on me from an angle that would completely cut me off from my own boat. One of them got around front to distract me. The other hit from behind. I broke away and raced for the treasure ship. There was a chance for me there, if I could get far enough in front. I sprinted for the booby trap doorway. Not knowing that I had disarmed the booby trap, they could only assume that I would blow us all to kingdom come. They preferred discretion to valor.
Now they knew that I knew about their booby trap. What they expected next, I didn't know. But I was sure that after a certain amount of time, they'd come back to look for me if they didn't see me leave the ship. I had a plan. men conferred at a safe distance from the ship. Then the leader sent his buddy back. I heard him coming. I got set for him. off his air. To breathe it all, he had to give up. The knife against his ribs gave me full command. With the first man as a shield, I moved back out toward the deck. I knew the second man would be out there waiting, and I knew what to do. I disabled the first man's air supply. Then the second man was on top of me. He was a dangerous antagonist, skilled with a knife. was against his stomach. It was over. Sin vergüenza. ¿Qué quieres? ¿Que te pida perdón? No, no me necesitas pedir perdón. Mi gente te va a perdonar. Ahora verás, sin vergüenza. Tú vas a pagar con tu vida. Ya no, mamá. Both of them. Señor Nelson, let me introduce to you Colonel Emilio Merida, former head of counterintelligence for the dictator. And for us, a real prize. But this, this one, one we trusted. A man we never suspected, but who can now explain this entire plan to us. That's great. With this information, I'm sure we can continue the salvage on a full scale, out in the open. Uh, looks like I worked myself out of a job. Out of a job, senor, but into the hearts of my countrymen. All right, you can take your stuff off. You still want to fight, huh? You had enough down there. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.